Hi, this is Dr. Wilmer Leon, and welcome to Inside the Issues. American activists have held a protest rally in New York City to condemn the stance of that city's mayor on police brutality. He's standing for the genocide and the murder and the stop and frisk and the gentrification of communities of color, of black and brown communities in our neighborhood in New York City, in Harlem, in Brooklyn. All over New York City, he's standing against these policies that only further support white supremacy, that only further support imperialism, and it shows through all his actions. Pro-Palestine activists from the movement known as Black Lives Matter likened U.S. police forces in New York to Israeli soldiers in violence and brutality. They also called for justice for Palestinians facing Israel's aggression across the occupied territories. Protesters rallied in front of the Sheraton Hotel in New York's Times Square, where the city's Mayor Bill de Blasio was holding a re-election campaign. The event cost as much as some $5,000 for each person in attendance. Authorities in New York are under fire for the deaths of a number of unarmed citizens at the hands of U.S. forces. Most victims were people of color. Well, to discuss that further, I'm joined by Dr. Wilman Leon, who is a columnist and political commentator, and he's joining us live from our studios right here in Tehran. Dr. Leon, thanks uh, for joining us, and welcome to Iran. Um, Dr. Leon, I'm wondering at this point, Bill de Blasio came into office promising to be exactly what he has not become. Um, he has, you know, a spouse who is African-American, I believe, and a child who is of mixed race. So how is it that Black Lives Matter would need to be protesting against his policies? Well, because based upon the reaction primarily of the New York uh, Police Department and the police union, uh, as they have turned, literally turned their backs on the mayor, he now has had to make some very hard uh, political calculus. Is he going to try to uh, stand up for the positions that he ran on and the platform that he ran on? Or is he going to engage in the very practical politics of not wanting to suffer the ire of the police union? And right now it appears as though he's deciding to decide on, on, on the side of the uh, police unions. Now, his predecessor, um, you know, was, was punished for his policies, um, and, uh, you know, that's how uh, Mayor de Blasio came into office. Will, do you think the mayor be punished for his policies, considering he is now up for re-election? Well, that's, right now, that's a, that's a difficult question, or maybe a difficult prediction to, uh, to make. Um, I, I think right now, so long as he stays on the side of the police unions, I think he will find, it'll be a very, very close call, but I think he remains victorious because I don't know that he really has the guts and I don't know that he really has the ability to articulate clearly enough uh, how it is that he would be able to support the people against the police. And if you look at what's happened in Baltimore and you look at what's happening in New York, it has become a them versus us mentality, the police versus the people. And it seems like right now as though the mayor is going to stand on the side of the police. And I'm glad you mentioned that keyword guts, Dr. Leon, because I wanted to pick up on that and, and ask you, is New York in many ways a New York mayor symbolic of what happens in cities throughout the U.S., as in politicians making that tough decision to stand with police unions instead of the people? Well, yes, historically that has definitely been uh, been the been the ment been the response or been the the tactic and the thought process, uh, but what's happened? What's starting to turn the tables is video. Prior to the advent of the cellular telephone and handheld video cameras, uh, the the no matter what the atrocity was, the argument was usually, uh, I was in fear of my life. The person threatened me, and as a police officer, I had to shoot him. And people erred on the side of the police. Now with video, and we are seeing time and time and time again that the police are not telling the truth, that they have been killing and murdering innocent people in the streets, the tide is starting to turn. And that is why if Mayor de Blasio, I believe, were wise and really sat down and developed a cohesive, comprehensive strategy, he could become the mayor that he ran as, similar to what President Obama did. President Obama ran on some very, very populist themes and issues, but we know he's a functionary of the uh, United States government, 
And so his policies wound up not being nearly as progressive as the politics that he ran on. So are we at a crossroads in a sense, Dr. Leon? Because you know many people say that such police brutality, especially against African Americans, has been going on for a very long time. Now we're just seeing video evidence because of you know technology progressing. Um, do you think that things are about to change, or is that is it too early for that? Oh, things are going to change. There's no there's no question about that. It's it's really a matter of how long it's going to take and how hard are the our citizens going to have to press the issue and the types of tactics that they're going to have to employ in order to bring about change. When you have the police commissioner of, of New York City, uh, uh, Bratton, coming to Israel and speaking to uh, 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 Israeli organizations about why they have to engage in extrajudicial killings and, 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 and processes uh, in the United States, that's a very, very bad sign. When you have American police forces coming to Israel to be trained and you have Israeli security forces coming to the United States to train them, that's a very, very, very bad sign. And as people become more aware of what is actually going on and why, the ire of the people, I believe, will eventually reach the point to where substantive serious change will be brought about. But it's going to be a long, hard fight before it does. Indeed, and I want to pick up on that mention of long, hard fight because you know now the fight is not um, in this us versus them scenario, as you mentioned earlier, is not just against African Americans, but against many other minority groups, be it Muslims or Latinos and others um, about immigration, for example. Um, how tough will this fight be? Will there be a lot more violence ahead? Do you think? Uh, Yes, I will say that there's going to be, be more violence, but it's very important to understand that the violence currently is the police being excessively violent against the people that they're sworn to protect and serve. The narrative is changing. Up until this point, the narrative has been it's the people, it's African Americans who have been violent against the police. The narrative has been, oh, it's these terrorist-inspired Muslims that have been uh, violent against the police. But the video is now showing that that narrative is a lie. And, the, and so, the long, the, so again, it's the police who are being violent against the people that they're sworn to protect and serve. And so it, that's why I say it's going to take a long time to, to start to change that narrative. But remember, the narrative doesn't change overnight. The narrative changes over time. Okay, we'll leave her there at that. But of course, Dr. Leon, we do appreciate you coming into our studios today. Um, that was Dr. Roman Leon, who's been speaking to us live from right here in Tehran.